This podcast is brought to you by the Disabled But Not Really Foundation, a local Kansas City nonprofit organization that pushes to instill a physical limitless mindset that breeds courage, confidence, and competence within the disabled community. You can follow and support Disabled But Not Really on social media or go visit their website at disabledbutnotreally.org. Their work and their mission is to really impact communities and make more people understand the benefits of inclusivity. Good morning, we are live. Hello everyone, April Jackson here with Mr. Wesley Hamilton. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> How early is it for you right now, Wes? <laughs> oh, man, it's 7 a.m. over here in Cali, but um, it really doesn't throw me off, though. Uh, I Actually, the other morning, I got up and went to the gym, and it was about 6.30. And the only thing that hit me was, because I'm an early bird, because I'm kind of still like based off of a uh, central time zone. I'll probably end up winning really out here in LA because well, nobody gets up to around like nine or 10. Like people are comfortable with sleeping in up here. Yeah. And for me, it's like, nope, I'm up. The streets are empty and this is the big city, you know? So if the streets are empty, you know you're getting up at a good time. And I think that's, yeah, so I'm motivated, already up, pumped up, ready for the day. Um, no sleep in my eyes, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> that's real, right? Like, <laughs> that, um, um, that's funny you said that because I was telling uh, this morning we were getting, going to the bakery, getting coffee, and it's, you know, 7 a.m. And same thing here in Pittsburgh. The streets are empty. Um, people walking their dogs. And, like, I've had a whole morning and I have three young men who are still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time. And first of all, yeah. do you guys notice Wes said he's in California? Wink. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling him. I kept telling him. Guess who's posted up in L.A. now? Yeah, I'm, def I'm absolutely chilling in L.A. And it's been good. Um, you know, just soaking everything in. I'm de I've... I've um, yeah, it's just been really, really good to just soak in LA and I don't know, like I haven't even did, like everyone's like, what are you doing? Like I haven't did, like went out to like a lot of entertainment spots, I would say, but I don't think that was why I came, you know, and um, I think as you grow, you find yourself being more distant to the, the, um, real popular and public scenes. I guess if, especially if you're into growth, like if you're just an entertainer, you're probably in that area. But I, I see myself more than someone that, you know, could be perceived as an entertainer, which I don't even see that. But um, yeah, so it's just kind of been good. Went to the beach yesterday and uh, was able to write, you know, a little bit of my book and, uh, I think the best feeling was how open I was about certain things because I felt the freedom around me. Ooh, I, I, I love that. <laughs> and so, I, I miss that. I miss when people said you miss California. Like, I didn't know how much I missed it till I left. Mm. And I'm like you, I get up, I'm still in East Coast time. So when I get home, I get up early and the tin is empty. And like, you've been to my sister's house. My mom lives like five minutes away from her. Just get on the tin off of La Brea or Crenshaw. I'm at the beach in 10 minutes because mm -hmm. there's no traffic, like you said. Yeah. And just to walk on the beach, sit on the beach, just to be still in that freedom. I, I, I feel it. Thank you. Yeah, I was satisfied. It didn't take long to give me all the satisfaction I needed. I was like, yeah, this is why I'm here. You know, like this mm -hmm. is this is it. So everybody I came in contact with, they're like, why you're here? I'm like, you might not believe me. Like, that's how I feel like I have to say it, because like when you tell people like I'm going to a place of 10 million 
people and all of this for peace. They were like, what? Mm -hmm. Like, how are you going to find peace in a, a city full of chaos? And I'm like, you know, when you find yourself, you understand what peace is. When you find yourself, you understand what happiness is. And you can you can be in an area and not be surrounded with that peace because of the mindsets in that area. Like, yeah. there's so many open minds here that I don't think you become bothered. It's like you bother people. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I, I feel like L.A. is. It's, it's not... You know, people do their own thing. They're moving. They're working. They're, you know. But if you want somebody' attention, you go out. You know, that's why you see people on the strip and things like that. It's like you are bothering people, and um, so it's a different thing. I'm not here to bother people, like you know, and I'm just here to be still and soak in the things that uh, are outside of the human beings that are like in this in this state. You know, it's like. There's so much that this this area can offer you, um, you know, and it's just going out the, you know, and looking outside type of stuff, right? Like taking a drive on a highway, like you, you always just, at least for me, it's, yeah, it's like, man, I wish more people could see life the way I do, because do you find if you can see it the way I do, there's joy in everything. So you know, little things, right? It's the little things, and and you consistently get the little things, and they add up. Um, but it's this, you know, it's the coffee in the morning. Um, it's the, you know, the don't do me like that. I haven't got to my. <laughs> it's a Starbucks, right? Like. You know, a crazy thing about, and I was so against Starbucks. I know this is changing a little bit, but I was so against Starbucks for a long time. I feel like there's no Starbucks in the hood. You know, that's That's all. real. <laughs> but there's really no coffee shops in the hood, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, but there's definitely a Starbucks on every corner over here. <laughs> like, so, and that's that's so real. You are, well, we're not going to tell people where you live because they're going to try to come over to your place. But um, <laughs> when you talk about like, you know, inner city, it was Magic Johnson who first, who built like the first Starbucks, like outside of LAX. Mm. Um, like where Crenshaw Baldwin Mall is like he has put a ton of money into the community. So now there is a Starbucks and a Krispy Kreme and, but for years, there were not those places because it seemed as though black and brown dollars didn't matter so much to big corporations. Yeah. And I mean, definitely still at that point, you know, um, <laughs> we are definitely still dealing with like a lot of uh, people that view these communities like, and don't give them the resources. And, you know, it's like people always talk about the, communities that you know uh, use drugs a lot let's just put it like that right and it's normally you know the high poverty areas and stuff right i'm like well shit they ain't got coffee i'm not saying it like that but some people I've been, right? I've been around people and they're like in order for them to start they day they, they hit need something shot. they need something right and That's it's like problem. most people in order to start their day they go for coffee you know, and they could get out, they go for it. And when you don't have access and that's like 30 minutes away from you, then maybe you do lean to something else because that 30 minutes might be 30 minutes on a regular community, you know, on a regular regular commute with a vehicle. But if you're from this area, you might be on a bus. So that 30 minutes is an hour and 30 minutes, right? Yeah. And so just thinking from those things, not saying like I condone any usage of anything, but I I just want to just add that because it's like when you take the resources from people, they find something else. Ooh, you know? well, and and I I, that. yes, because I, I've I, I mean I've definitely didn't just been around some people that, that did some you know they do not you know what you would be good with, but it would come with words like you know. Before I can get, you know, get started with my day, I got to go do this. I got to, you know, and it's like, 
then you go on the other side of town, people are like, yeah, coffee starts my day. And I'm like, but what about the people that don't have access to coffee? Like when I'm at home back in KC, I'm always driving a distance for coffee, you know? And it's, it's, I think it's normal for me now to know that it's not in my community. But I always talk about that. Like I always talk about like, I think that's why I was happy when uh, they put that Hilltop coffee shop over in Inglewood. Yeah. Um, here in LA and I went to that when it first opened up maybe two three years ago because I was just excited about um, seeing something within culture and I know more communities are having more coffee houses pop up in urban in urban areas but you know if you could ask me I think it's more of a push from the entrepreneurship world and people doing more business meetings at coffee shops and so on compared to maybe the resource of coffee and what it provided for so many entrepreneurs and business owners and the bigger corporations that go and grab their coffee every morning just to make it to work, you, you know? know? I am glad, <laughs> like, what you're saying is so, so spot on with the stigma that is placed upon um, us, you know, and, and, you know, it's Pride Month. So the stigma put upon not only just like if you're gay, but if you're black, right? Black and gay, black and disabled, black and female, black and black, black and male. Um, the, the stigma, like, you know, a, a hit of something to get your energy going is, is bad if you're black and, yeah. and you, you puff, sniff, drink your coffee or do whatever. And you're, you, you are, you're victimized and, and, and you really, a bad stimulus put on you. And like you said, like, but you're not giving access to people to walk to the corner and get coffee, to go to the beach. I, I remember I was telling you guys, um, my sister, she's in South Central where she's a principal at a school. I taught in South Central and now, you know, it's a 15 minute drive down Manchester to Westchester to where the beach is. Yeah. There were people who had never, I had kids who had never seen the ocean, who live 15 and 20 minutes away from it. And in that neighborhood, they're not nice grocery stores. They're mm. not healthy food options. Things are changing, like you said, but it's because we are having to bring it back. Yeah. And that's kind of what we wanted to touch on when we were centering this month around uplifting and supporting those of us who are oppressed in our society, we're still finding our healing. Like you said, you moved there to find and to be in your peace because you had already right. found your peace, just to be in your peace. I left LA to find my peace. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the, the opportunity to have lived in different states and experienced different ways of being and find what's still the same. I'm still myself yeah. wherever I go. And in our country, we're still stigmatized. Um, and like you said, access, like it's okay to give everybody access. And when you don't give people access, you're gatekeeping, yeah, you're gatekeeping. Yeah. And that's, Absolutely. that's not okay. No, um, no. And I, and I, I definitely think that like, when you, when you look at it from, I think the perspective as I've rode through LA a few times, I don't, I can't hold nobody against n coming from one area and never seeing the other. Like, right. even though it's big, like, one, because it's big, you're not going all over L.A. Just, just on a random, like, you know, let me go check it out. And um, because all your resources are almost on every corner, you, you don't have to go far. Like, the convenience for you to kind of stay yeah, there might be other, you know, better places a little bit further if you're coming from like the inner city. But I couldn't see people like, you know, every day like, oh, man, let me go check out the houses on the hills. Let me go, you know, go into the nice areas and like grow from like what I see. Like, no, it was probably feeling like you couldn't reach it because Hollywood can be intimidating. You know, like I just drove up and down it and you just always see something happening on the, on the strip. You know, they got cameras and stuff and you got somebody that hasn't reached that magnitude 
or have limited themselves to not even thinking they can, um, right. it can be intimidating. So not saying like, and I'm just going more or less to you saying like, I left LA to find my peace. And it's just because you were surrounded, you know, at least from what I've heard and learned, you know, you were surrounded, your community was different, you know what I mean? So the mindsets that you were surrounded by, didn't have you where that you could go out and like for me coming in, I'm not surrounded so much around that mentality because I'm not born here. Right. You see what I mean? And or raised here. Um, but every time I go back to KC, I am surrounded by that mentality. Mm-hmm. So there's yeah. no peace. I'm surrounded by chaos because I'm just I I'm empathetic to people problems, right? Like so you come here, uh, you could be in a different city and yet your friends and people you cool with you might feel but it's kind of like when you get away from the people that can pull you and drain your energy um just from their ish problems um or negative mindsets it's like it does bring you peace like and i think we're just escaping from those that drain us non-intentionally like i don't think they're it's intentional it's just who they are Right. You know, and so as you elevate, there are certain frequencies that drain your energy. Yeah. Right. Like, and so I think that's just what it is. It's like we want to radiate different and we want to be on a higher vibration. But when we go in certain areas, that vibration doesn't get high because of the frequency of everyone else around us. Yeah. It's been a heavy few years <laughs> and a heavy month. And, you know, our last, we ended our last um, open spaces. Um, I read from the book I had been reading at the time um, from Passage Meditation um, about slowing down and taking things slow. And at the same time, you had, you were checking your phone just to, you know, check in and you were like, April, like, damn, I'm glad you read that. And Buffalo, somebody just yeah. went in and shot up people in the grocery store. Um, majority, if not all, were black. I think one person wasn't black. White man drove two hours, went into the grocery store, Buffalo, shot down. The majority of people were elderly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a few weeks later, Somebody goes in, an 18-year-old, and I mean, it's just broken my heart to see these Latino, that the Latino population, like, just onslaught. Little baby, little babies. And then it just seems like almost every day somebody is shooting somebody else. So it's a a game now. It's... mm, and it's not a game, you know what I mean? But it's like it's not a game, but there are people that there's not enough enforcement within, you know, our government and our systems. And so people are finding it as a hobby. Like it's like they're contesting. The way I see it is, you know, it's it's just like you don't do things when you know like you're going to, like life is over for you. Right. Like we haven't we haven't, you know, like I don't I, I don't think people are playing to like for an end game where they're like, oh, man, I'm doing all of this and like I'm a die. Like, no, like our government and our system has shown that we will, you know, gun down innocent black men before we gun down people that are mass murderers, you know, and 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 um, and so I think now people see it as, yeah, I might go to prison, but like. You know, it's I, I hate has a a hate has a energy that people gravitate and feed off of, especially if it's negative. You know, and and, and negativity is its own frequency and energy. But what I look at, like from what's going on, is just think of it like as a childhood, right? Like you know, when you're doing wrong, you don't try to. Like you try to get better, mm-hmm. yeah. but there's nothing grown like these the situations are happening all over our country. Um, the situations are getting pushed under the rug. Like, you know, it looks like more, I mean, think about how the Texas thing went and like, I didn't go into in depth of like the governor's headlines and stuff, but it wasn't pleasant. 
on a reaction or even a police response on going into the so we get there right but like just saying there's no push to like there's fear like people fear you know if they're fearing what's happening but there's like yeah like i, I want to say like i know people like gun laws like we need gun control and there's no push for that so people are going out and frankly frankly living like they're on call of duty mm. you know and 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 I and I reference Call of Duty out of everything because I feel like I don't want to be the person to be like, oh man, these games is being influenced, right? Like because that ain't me. But what I can say is these games is being practiced for those that hate so much because there's hate on these systems, mm-hmm. you know, especially vocally. Like if you ever been on an online game, you're like, God damn, I ain't even know these kids spoke like that. And I didn't know that either. <laughs> like I, my partner plays games and my kids and my, my older son and particularly even my middle son, my older son, I remember one time he's like, mom, you won't believe the stuff that people say, even on TikTok. Like, yeah. you know, I always joke, he's TikTok famous, which he is, you guys. So follow him because he gets paid. <laughs> um, but he showed me, like, he did an innocent video of soccer, yeah. uh, softball players. He has to ban certain words mm. from coming up in the comment sections because people were being so mean. And it blows my mind. And like you said, these are kids who are saying and doing these things but you know it's it's a i mean i definitely feel like there's a lot they go i mean we had a situation back in kansas city um a young man i think um he went in and uh went into his school and shot like um it was just a couple months ago Hmm. got the officer that was there and i think a teacher so it wasn't like kids or anything but and he was a black kid um and um so again we are dealing with a lot there's a lot of so let's just start there right but there's a lot of trauma that's happened in the last few years society is not understanding the mental impact the quarantine had on our youth um you know i see it just from my child alone right Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm there was a lot of separation and them getting around so many individuals back into the world, society itself opening back up. If you're not, if people paying attention, there's a lot of anxiety within individuals. There's people don't have patience. Um, There's a lot that's happening. That's like, yeah, everything is getting crazy. Right. And I think that we need to understand that the mindsets of people right now aren't, actually where it needs to be for our country to heal the proper way like we went through covid we went through the george floyd situation which has been greatly died down um you know and then we went through or we're going through right now the world opening back up and people going in and taking lives Right. Like that that wasn't so much happening when everybody was really at home and stuff was down. But I mean, outside of that. Right. People get I mean, schools, uh, systems are messing up. Kids aren't being like, you know, those things aren't being talked about, but teachers aren't getting paid enough. Right. So now kids aren't getting taught or teachers aren't wanting to teach. Right. Like there are so many things that the leaders that were leading aren't doing so much of bleeding because of the back end. Like it just so much happened. In and it's, systemic. it's systemic. It keeps going on and on and on. And this isn't political by any means. This is just a reality of what's happening in our society, in our world right now. And if you guys watching or listening later, wondering why we're bringing it up, this, we are reflective of what, has happened like we have suffered gun violence you directly me indirectly i've lost family to gun violence not by a white dude you know what i mean like you know we've internalized a lot of this um of this thinking and that's i think what you're speaking to like we have 
absorbed all of this and we don't know how, what to do with that kind of energy. And so it's, this is real. <laughs> like you said, people are playing games. This is weird. This real, this affects, there are many disabled Americans, right? Because of the gun violence. Because of gun violence. You know, I always, when I listen to people talk about gun violence and um, they're always talking about the deaths within gun violence. And I'm like, there is such a large demographic of people that survived and they are dealing with trauma within that. Rather, it is a physical disability, rather it's PTSD. Like I, I think to myself, like society has really put me on such a pedestal that they don't even think mentally that I probably deal with the trauma that was caused by gun violence. Like when I hear about gun violence, it makes me reflect on the day that I was shot. Mm. When, when I hear uh fireworks right like man like i'm i'm not a fan of the fourth of july anymore i used to be like now i'm the old person that's like all in the oh, house in a house or like oh we're gonna go somewhere where we get to see it from a distance you know like because i can't be around it and yeah. honestly like i'm not even a fan of guns from that perspective anymore because of the damage that it did to me, you know, and, and what it has done for my community. And until it happened to me, I didn't understand the effects of it from the community because frankly, most people die. So that story of Not healing cool. or after the fact isn't a story, right? Mm -hmm. so, and I think um, just from you saying like, yeah, so from a personal experience, like I am a survivor of gun violence, but definitely get triggered you know by all the events that are happening that are centered around gun violence because i just i, I feel the pain i feel the pain rather than someone that dies i feel the pain if they 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 live and i'm thinking about what they have to go through what they're going through mentally what their support system is like i think it's just one of those you know those moments of like we become connected, you yeah. know, within the system because no, not too many people understand it. Um, and yeah, I think that, yeah, you know. And the stories need to be told. What What's landing with me, like, and even like listening to you, even just in, in this moment, because we've talked about this stuff before. It's like in our community, like people are like, well, they're, you know, black people kill more black people than white people kill black people. That's not the point. <laughs> If we look at gun violence, let's say within the black community, mm -hmm. and we look at um, gang violence, gun violence, when you suppress people and you you hold them down, there's an energy there. When you don't give access, when you intentionally limit resources and education, and all of these factors play into, and it doesn't matter how much money you have, I'm gonna get pulled over by a cop just like. My sister on crack on the corner is going to get pulled over on crack because we're both exactly. brown and the cops are going to look at us the same way. There's going to be an explosion. White people, like, it statistically it has shown that there's more interracial violence within yeah. any community, Asian, Latinx, Black, brown, whatever, because we're, we're tribal in that way. Yeah. But the bigger picture is, you know, we look at people now and typically in the news, you'll see you can you, you can see graphics of like, you know, these black people committed crimes. They had a cigarette they were selling. Right. Mm -hmm. um, all of these black people got killed. Mm -hmm. All of these white people went into a church, went into a, a um, grocery store. <laughs> they went to these places, mass murdered people. One dude's eating Burger King. All of them are still. Still alive. Still alive. You cannot tell me. You cannot tell me that they're like, oh, well, they have mental health issues, which again is BS because people who have neurodiversity and mental health issues are not violent. That that's mm -hmm. number one. That's wrong to put that stigma on the community. And two, okay, well, how come they have mental health needs that should be addressed? But these people didn't have mental health needs that need to be addressed. And that's 
that that's what that's because black people are feared black people are more threatening we don't have mental health issues we just have that's issues <laughs> And, I, and, you know, and I, and I like to go into that because, you know, mental health is important, but people need to, under, like, right now, I'm, I will always say, you know, I'm very offended by how um, this whole, uh, you know, protesting Black lives and everything kind of just got, you know, swept under the rug. Um you know, I, I, don't, I don't think anybody put in enough effort for even Black History Month this year, right? Like, it just, everything got quiet compared to last year. Last year, it was like campaigns, everything. Every um, company. You know, but everyone, everyone wants to be a part of the fight, right? Like, and everyone wants to bring up the mental health conversation. They want to talk about it within their groups and their communities. And that's great. But what people don't add with that is that they have family, they have morals, they have ethics, and they don't want to be black. Mm. Right. Because everybody in society knows that if you're black, you're definitely dealing with more stigmas than any other background, race, religion, it doesn't matter. If you're black, you're black and your black people are treated the same in every country, you know, no matter where you are. Colorism. Um, and so when I when I hear like so so when people are over here in America and we're talking about black people, they quiet that conversation down on mental health. But we what the what even makes our mental health even worse is us knowing that there's a lot of areas that causes the mental health stigmas in our community. Right. Mm -hmm. But then when you look on the other side, you got people that, you know, damn well, you ain't got that many problems, but they're, <laughs> you know, their issue that's mental health and your issue that's a threat. So you're more eager to be killed in, in, in something than that person that you are looking at. Like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm where they at. Yeah. But at the same time, it's, it's clouded. So like what I was getting to though, April, is like when we're talking about all these communities, I truly believe like that mental health stigma is bad. And when we look at the, okay, so here's the other thing. These, I mean, definitely saw this, the Texas thing shift, right? So I do want to, I want to add that like the Texas was with the Latin X community and like my condolences and everything goes that way. But what we've seen in a lot of mass shootings is that they impact and go affect the black communities, right? Even like the grocery store, you know, you're thinking about your grandparents and stuff now, and then are they safe at the grocery store? That only adds to the generational trauma that we've already dealt with right. from the mass shootings that were dealt in slavery days that no one talks about that creates this system that, you know, from the shootings that we do within our own community through the PTSD, like I go around and I see people in dispensaries, like I always see white people at dispensaries. I'll never see black people. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's just real. I never see black people at the dispensary. Appreciate I always see white people. And that all of them had the same issues that all, I feel like black people don't even understand that they should be claiming. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's like, and not, it's just the privilege, right? It's the privilege to be able to speak and say that anxiety is a disability to you. Right. It's a privilege to say that, you know, um, you have PTSD, right? Like, and yeah, you might have it from going through something, but Black We're people got it. it. Right. right. We're not denying it. But I've yeah. literally been told by people in my family, like, you ain't got no time for that. That's that you 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 can go to therapy you and you can't even afford it you don't have time well, because we we're trying to we're trying to find that success see that's what i'm getting to like like most of these races have family morals and ethics rather what country or what you have someone that's successful in your life black families half of them don't even have someone that they're looking at to say okay you can help us get to another level. Most people are making ends meet. You don't have the generational wealth. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Right. Like these people, I, I go out and I see all these families get together and stuff. I'm like, yeah, we're we're getting there, but there are just so many more people that focus on family first, which helps family build. And we're working on building ourselves and then coming back to family. You see what I mean? Because no, it's, I see a hundred- it's been different. So then when you build yourself, your family is disconnected from you. That's the black community, right? Yeah. And that's how it's been instilled. But like say most kids wait are born, and I don't want to like target any community, but say I mean you get born into a commu- uh, uh, a world of doctors. And I listen to podcasts a lot. So I listen to people share their stories and I'm listening. And even though they go through trauma, they haven't talked about a a financial struggle. They haven't talked about lack of not having the influence in their life. Right. They haven't, you see what I mean? Like they haven't talked on, like, yeah, you might've went through stuff, but imagine people that have no hope. Yeah, they have no, because in our country, and, and like you said, throughout the world, like if you're brown, you pass that paper bag and darker, I don't care what country you are in in this world, you are considered lower. In our country, we go 400 plus years, right? Mm -hmm. And we come, our families were intentionally torn apart. Men were taken to breed and kids were taken, like families were literally stripped because we were considered like dogs, you know, we were considered exactly human, pro- not even human. We were just considered property. So like you're saying, there's no familial foundation. And it's not to say because we're incapable of it. Like we come from a legacy in the continent of Africa where people live in villages based on their their familial connections. But you come here and all that is stripped away And so, like you said, we're building on the trauma. You come out of slavery, you could be a sharecropper. You you know, the property owner's still taking all your money. So, yes, there's drinking, there's drugs, there's um, sexism. There's everything that we're doing now. Because, of, like you said, the trauma, the trauma, the trauma. And then you're told, well, you have these broken families. It's because of the broken family. It's because, and it's like, well, Give somebody, give us a leg up, give us some leverage, give us equity so we can be seen whole and well and healthy. We can be that. But no, you're being blamed. You're being blamed for your issues. You're being blamed for your issues. So let's let's go full circle with this. So let's take this and then go into like what's going on in our world, in our country. Right. And and understand that. If you have a community of people that, one, have definitely witnessed um, the defeat of a black man, like you can't see that of any other race, right? Just haven't seen it, not here in America, you know, not from that magnitude. And so that's trauma. We go into quarantine. That's trauma. We're losing majority of our family because our family are the ones with the health issues that were affected by COVID, right? Like that's trauma. Right. Like I felt like most of my community lost all the all of us lost our grandmas this year. Mm. Um, I know like definitely back home in KC. Yeah. And um, that's trauma. Right. Like and then you go into knowing that you see something, but you see someone get kind of get swept under the rug like a mass shooter. They get arrested, whatever. That's trauma because, you know, that for you, it wouldn't even get that far. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, like for you like I stopped watching it, be- and I think I had a lot of people that reached out to me on social media, like you know, with the wake of the, you know the gun violence. Like, how do you feel? How do you feel about gun control? How do you feel about gun laws? And I'm like, it's hard for me to feel about anything when I know I probably get shot before I could say anything. Mm. And and so for me, it, it it affects me in so many ways. Like I hate to see it. I don't want it to 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 be happening period but then it's like you know on the back end like any like i always speak on it like i'm always going to be seen as a black man first not my disability even now right and 
we as black men, we've probably all been through a situation where that makes sense, right? Like we've been through a situation where, yeah, we felt defenseless. And if we slipped up or said the wrong thing or even acted like maybe we weren't going to make it past that day. And I, I think that those things make it traumatizing where that when we get into situations, maybe we're nonchalant or not speaking up so much about things because no one's understanding all the trauma. Like I just, I had to be blunt with people recently. Like, man, I don't want nobody trauma dumping on me no more if it doesn't come with healing too. Right, right, like, right. Like don't, don't tell me your story if we gonna about to be crying together, bro. But, <laughs> and nothing wrong with crying, but- It's, not, it's, it's definitely it's not wrong. That is. But there, we have so much trauma. I'm dealing with trauma every day. I'm soaking in all of this. When I see a group of black people get murdered and a murderer goes walk away, but I see a black man get murdered because he's understood and might have like that bothers me. That creates trauma where I have such a distaste in my mouth. I don't want to hear about it. Right. Like I don't. Yeah. And so it's like someone else can tell me their problem. And I'm like, but just, right now, I think even the push of just making sure that everyone understands the differences but the reason why we should all really come together in a sense to get more control over the gun violence as a whole yeah. because there are certain communities like the what we're talking about from a black perspective is that there are just certain communities that's like oh man that's bad but it probably wouldn't happen to them you know, and that's 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 true. Like the majority, it can happen anywhere nowadays. Yes, like, we can, especially with schools. Like I asked my son, "Is there anyone at your school who you are not fearful of, but you can see doing something?" He's like, "Oh yeah, we got a whole group of people at my school who I can see." And my son is one of very few black kids at his school. It when I say predominantly white, I'm talking ninety yeah. percent, but. You're right, Wes. And and I feel like you, like when we had our last time and you you saw what was happening at the, the grocery store, I saw that earlier in the morning just on my news feed. I've turned I put my phone down and, and I was like, I can't. My heart cannot take it right now. And like you said, it's not that I don't care, but I knew I would cry. I knew I would like writhe in pain. I'd be angry. And it's like we can only take so much. And yet, back to the title, and still we're finding healing. Listen, April, um, just quick line from my Kendrick Lamar new album, because I feel like Kendrick Lamar new album is like a healer for Black men, especially if you actually listen to it and like take it in. Yeah. It's something like, you want me to save the world? You want me to go and save the world? I'm trying to save myself. Oof. You know, and and I, it, it, that really hit me because even with platforms, people want you to go and save the world and you can only do so much. And it's like if you're not healing through the daily trauma, the daily adversity, then and, and you're just trying to go save something else then you become lost. And I know that like for a lot of people. So it's not it's just that we need more healed minds to understand what's happening in our country. Because, yeah. you know, if you become more healed and conscious, then we'll understand that we need to do more to make these things go away because it is affecting communities that a lot of people aren't a part of. But there is a beautiful community that people are a part of that is affecting, right? Yeah. Like there's a difference, right? And I think the people that are have a voice aren't affected in these communities. And yeah. that's the problem. You know, it's like, they're going back and yeah, it can happen anywhere, but it, it just, it definitely just as of right now, it just seems like where it's happening is not becoming that big of a concern to individuals that have a voice that aren't from those areas, because I don't think that anyone like as, as and I don't want to get far on this because trust me as a man, I don't have so much viewpoint. I'm learning. I'm learning ladies but <laughs> definitely if we could push so much for these abortion laws and all of this that we just did why isn't why aren't we doing a lot for gun laws and Ugh. 
you know, and so that's, I mean, again, like I didn't go in depth about it because I'm, I'm learning on that back end, but I, I know whatever did happen was bull crap. And it's all, it's all part of the system too, though, because it's all connected because it all goes back to not giving people choice mm -hmm. and it, it falls under like abortion but it's all going back to the amendments. It's all not giving people a choice to make their own decision. Yeah. The 13th, 14th Amendment will connect back to the Second Amendment. And it's all about taking agency away, especially from Black and Brown people, people who are identified as women, people yeah. who, you know, it, it, it's, it's so big. And you landed on... I, I believe this in my heart of hearts, like if we can take time to heal ourselves, we can move forward in a way it's it, in, in society to help heal society. Like when you drop that pebble in the pond, the ripples keep yeah. you know, outward. And when, you know, one little ripple happens in the ocean, it builds, it builds, it creates a wave. So it's not for not, it's not futile to take care of yourself. Because when you care about your life, you might not want to take somebody else's life. You, you, you know what I mean? No, no, you just value life. Like when you when you value yourself, you don't you don't have hate in your body because you understand the journey that it got to that self-love and awareness makes you want to see it in other people. Yeah. Right? And you can act it to you and you want to give it out of you. You want to give it out. And that's, I think, when people love themselves, they love freely. Mm, ooh. You know, you Let's know. be coming up with these quotes. <laughs> when people love themselves, they love freely. Because, because I'm not against anything, right? Like, I always talk about, like, the hate that I had. Like, even when somebody upset me now, like, I'm not mad. I don't hate you. I still love you, right? Like, yeah. I just might not can deal with you, right? Like, but I'm loving freely because I love myself and I don't want a negative bone in my body. You know, you all used to hear those uh, those terms, like, I don't want a negative bone in my body, or it could be something else. It was something about a bone in your body, but it was like in a negative manner. That's people that have truly been able to find themselves and like know what that peace looks like. Like I can be in a world of chaos and still love freely. You know, like um, for for example, the other day, the other day I was uh, going to the barber shop. Um, I got a barber up here. I'm always exactly. trying to find, stuff. <laughs> but I was going to the barber shop. I was getting out the car and I seen this homeless gentleman. It was two gentlemen. They were coming over to me. And the guy asked me that I need some help. I said, no, I don't need no help. I got it. He said, I could, I, I, he said something like, yeah, it looked like you got it. But then he switched up and he said, uh, I got a way of words. Can I spit some poetry to you for a couple of dollars, right? Nice. And so I said, man, I don't want you to waste your, your words because I don't have any dollars on me, right? And so, uh, and again, it was just straight love. It wasn't nothing. It was love. And what was came in return blew my mind, April. So I'm trying to uh, pay for parking, right? He comes over and pays for my parking. See? And then he takes time to read the meter because it was a little higher than what I could reach to explain to me because he only had 75 cents so hold on this is the other thing I only had 75 cents it was a dollar 25 to like fill up for the whole so he took time to read how much the 75 cent actually got me and then so now I'm scrambling in my bag like I know I got change like I didn't even think about change at this yeah. time so I found like 35 no I found like 75 cent myself I put 50 in there and I gave him 25 cent and he was grateful for the 20 so I said man thank you and he said thank God hmm. and that for me was loving freely hmm. no matter if you could do but you still love like you still give that compassion that love like I didn't push him off because I didn't have anything from him I didn't allow him to waste his his talents on me like instead we 
show love for one yeah. another without yeah. looking. And that's that's what I mean. I didn't see his lifestyle as negative. Yeah. Right. Like in and in return, he showed me that his life he has a way of giving. Yes. Rather, you see him in a certain state. And yeah. I feel like if again, if people people are judgmental because they haven't healed. Mm. Whew, that was beautiful, Wes. And <laughs> recorded, so we're gonna ask Rodney to like cut paste that, put it out there. <laughs> and that's how I that's why I, I sense that you know you and I connect so much because I'm with you a, a, along those lines, like every human being is here for a reason and how wonderful that guy was like, I don't want to take anything free from you. Let me give you my gift. We all have gifts. We all have talents. We all, this young teenage girl ministered to me the other day. And I was just like, blown. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm helping her. And she's like, can I tell you something? And she just like ministered to me. And that's, that's healing. Like we heal each other. And that's, why you and I come to this space because we talked about the, the, the gravity of what is happening to our community. And again, we always say like, we've come to a place where we have a modicum of success, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't take away from the gravity of what's happening. And we still find healing because in this space and time, we're not alone. There are others who look like us, who don't look like us, and who have found success. So we reach back. And your story just made me think of the Bible. And we can, you know, share our books and what we're doing to find healing. It just made me think of the woman who had no money and the prophet comes to her and she gave him her last bit of oil to make bread. She gave him everything she had. And she was blessed. She didn't know she was going to get blessed. She gave it because she wanted to honor that person. Yeah. And if we can honor ourselves in that way, we can honor others. And that's, but that's all it. I I know that the like I don't have a negative mindset because I love myself, right? Like you said, you got to that point. I it was a journey, but it was yeah. the self awareness and acceptance of all things, and knowing things aren't going to be perfect. Know that I'm not perfect. Like it's. It's things that people don't want to see. You know, I, I think I was having a meeting with someone yesterday. And I said, I'm at a point where I want people to come to me when they're ready to look at themselves in a mirror. Mm. And, and, and that's just because you're at a place of healing or you're wanting to be healed because you're willing to look and face the person that you have avoided for so long. Yeah. You know, and the hate and negativity comes from avoiding you. Like, yeah. I, you know, it's like the if you don't connect with your soul, then you're not, you know, it's like when people speak from their soul, right? They're given love because they already have found themselves from a deeper place. And you there's know? that space in everybody. And it's like, if you're in pain, you're going to give out pain. And yeah. that's what you said in the beginning, this gun violence, um, it's a reflection on individual pain. It's a collect, it's a reflection on societal pain. For us just to let people now 3D print guns and buy the pieces on Amazon and, and us not to take care of humanity. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I think, but again, it goes in so many ways. When you have when you have police policing in the negative way, it gives people that aren't even law enforcement the power to go take things in their own hand when you got people running someone down jogging to police right like you have you have all these examples of why it's okay yeah 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 and so you're like okay i'm i'm gonna do you that too. What i mean like you don't have examples on why it's not you don't see like i i, I <laughs> Don't nobody come and shoot the messenger, all right? Like, I'm <laughs> telling y'all, y'all not going to like this. But I'm just like, the other day, I was just like, man, you know, why hasn't it? Because it would change the tables. And again, I'm not condoning this. But I'm like, why hasn't there been like a mad, you know, something that's happened? And you got that one black officer like, oops. You know what I mean? Like, for real. Like, I'm just saying, like, I don't want it to happen. But I'm just like. 
just to change it. Like, damn, oops, now I thought it was my taser, but I killed this dude that just went in here and killed 10 people instead of us letting him walk home. Like, I know the other person, you know, but that also wasn't a person that is primarily white. Yeah. Right. Like, and so that's also what we want to speak on too, because that creates this trauma and this hate and this negative approach when you do get approached by people that's supposed to serve you because yeah. they're not serving everyone equally. Equally. Right. right. So it brings back trauma. Like, it, you might not be affected by the actual shooting that happened all over the, on the other side of the country. Yeah. But you become affected by the human interaction to the law enforcement that was supposed that might have the same viewpoint of how that situation was handled compared to how they're going to handle yours. So it's like it's a mental like if you knew that everyone was going to be treated right, then you would wouldn't even come to people in a defensive manner. You're right. Right, yeah, because you just know you would know you would know what the rules are. Instead, you like, well, shit, y'all probably going to kill me because I. I but they know they want. And so I think that it does go full circle. But all in all, like you guys, like we're just we're definitely just sharing our opinions, you know, and, and our viewpoints on just how we see the world um, right now. And we just want to be very open and transparent that we're in the process of healing from a lot of this trauma that we're consuming on a daily within society um, and then within the thing in our lives and we're human just like everybody else and these conversations are coming up and I and and we wanted to make sure that we have it so that everyone can know that you know our thoughts are the same you know maybe we take a different you know different ways of practicing but that's why we wanted to be um very open with yeah. the audience today and just know like again you know we 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 speak from love and we speak from a place of healing yeah. Um, and we want everyone else to do the same. And we're walking, we're walking the journey. We don't agree with anything that's happening in our country. And if we could all be one, that would be the goal. So yeah. um, just please understand, but we cannot avoid and, and, and not, you know, and, and take away from just the facts in, in our, in our country, you know? And so, um, and from being black representation, we want even those that, our community represent to understand that, hey, you are seen. Yes. And what you're going through is understood, you know, and it's, good, it's felt. So. We are right there. Um, we could talk forever. So I know we got a minute or so. I wanted to share what I've been reading and hear about what you've been listening to or reading. And one thing is Viola Davis. I tell you. I bought, I think I've purchased about five books of these now. You know, you want to give them to all your friends, yeah, yeah. giving them away. But what's interesting when you talk about hope, when you read her story, this woman, I think she has a goat. I don't think she has a Grammy, but she she has Oscars, Tonys, like she has almost oh, every yeah. word. Um, I just don't think she has a Grammy, but oh, she might anyway. Poor. She interviewed with Oprah and Oprah was like, I thought I was poor from Mississippi. She said, you were poor. This woman, if you want to read what it means to grow up as a black person in this society, like poor, 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 and then still find the success that she has found, get this book. I think it should be in everybody's library. So I've been reading this and I just wanted to share when we talk about healing I'm going through a yoga um, program with uh, Susanna uh, Bakarat Taki. Susanna, I hope I said your name right. But I've been teaching yoga for a long time, since early 2000s. And I've always believed, like what we're talking about, there's beauty in humanity. There's beauty in people. There's beauty in other cultures. I never taught yoga thinking that I was teaching and representing all of yoga. I think, you know, the culture of yoga from, you know, South Asia, from India has so many wonderful elements and, and from our own African roots, like there are yogis in Africa, you know, there's so much healing in this. And so, but in America, yoga has been extracted from social justice and from peace and mm -hmm. from movement forward. Gandhi 
He starved himself in order to work for social justice. Martin Luther King Jr. learned from Gandhi's nonviolence practices. It's steeped in social activism and the fact that people have tried to extract out of it this like, let me be this like beautiful person doing a yoga pose and oh my God, no, there are some deep roots. So I, you see my books all tabbed up. Yeah, right. But I like that because I think, you know, even that should be pushed out because they're definitely negative people sitting there doing dope poses. <laughs> quotes, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't go do, doing that pose and you sitting there with this negative mindset condoning to what's happening in this world. Like, understand your practice and understand. But that, okay, so that goes into what I'm reading, right? Okay, okay, okay. Um, and it, it has alignment. I'm listening, actually, I, it's Jay Shetty's book, The Think Like a Monk. Yes. And so, yeah. like, I feel like it just has some alignment with what you're talking about, because he went through that monk practice, which taught him how to be still, you know, and be kind of really it's, it's a powerful thing, you know. And I'm sure if you ever seen monks, most people probably judge them because they're just not you. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> they don't move like you. They're not doing what you do. But they have they have peaceful minds and they have made commitments within society to to be one self, right, in so many ways. And so listening to that, but then also listening to how, you know, Jay went from going to the practice and gra grabbing what he could and then backing out of it so that he could live his life. And mm -hmm. so that too, um, for me, is just one of those great um, books that I feel like anyone, but you have to, again, be at a place where, you're willing, because I feel like it, it's allowing you to go into certain lanes and like gain the knowledge, but you don't have to be identified within that lane. You I know, like, like you don't have to have that identity, you know, that identity on you for the rest of your life. Like I said, think like a monk. Like, yeah, he went for the practice, but he went to, he wanted to be married. You know, he wanted to do other things. So he went on and did that, but doesn't mean that he don't think like a monk. And so I just, I, I really, I really like that because like like what you're saying, like I don't have to be a yogi, right? I don't know how they say it, but yeah, I don't have to be a yogi, but maybe if those practices were pushed out in a in a, a more higher way, right? Like, oh, it's practice for nonviolence and this and that, I would think like a yogi. Yeah. Right. Like you see what I'm saying? Like it doesn't we grab the practices and we can think that way because we can understand there's a perception outside of the negative view that we have in society in this world. And it comes with nonviolence and it comes with peace, you know? And so that's, you know, so think different in a way. That's the, you know, my biggest affirmation is always, if I can change my thoughts, I can change the world. And so like, I definitely feel like, you know, that's it, you know, changing your way of thinking can save your life and the rest of the people around you. And you don't have to, you're not doing nothing, but changing you. That's what people don't think. Like We're not changing the world. We're changing ourselves. The world starts to shift once we change ourselves, because we realize that there's more people in alignment with that mindset than we think, you know, just our vibration is only going to put us in a frequency that we see. So we're negative, we're around negativity. If we think positive, we're thinking love, we're loving freely. We start to be around it by people that love freely, you know? And it's like, oh shit, you always been here? Yes, I've been here, buddy. I was waiting on you to start loving like I love so we can love each other the right way, right? Like I'm not caring about where you're from or what you represent. I love you for you. Your name is what? Like that's where love comes from. What's your first name? Because that's who I'm looking at. That's who I care about. But if I worry about what happened to you, I worry about like where you come from. I don't love you. I'm judging you. I love that. Thank you. I put the books in there. Viola <laughs> Davis. Viola, if you want to come talk to me and Wes, we here. <laughs> yes, yes, Nana, yes. You want to come talk to us? We're here. Jay Shetty. I'm telling you, I'm in yeah. LA now, G. <laughs> Put it out into the universe, our black and brown brothers and sisters. If you want to join Wes and I for a conversation, we would love it. And yes. we do just invite all of you to, you know, dive into these because it can be a space of healing and, and grounding and centering in the midst of this turmoil going around us. So I put your quote in too. Uh, if I can Absolutely. change my thoughts, I can change the world. So 
Happy Sunday, you all. We did this a week early because next week, Sunday, yeah. oh, is yeah. oh. Best and Father's Day and all the daddies out there. So um, I guess I I guess before we, you know, we're in and um, give us two minutes, y'all. But um yeah, Father's Day is next week. So um uh, just want to give love and grace to all the fathers, um, all the single fathers. I, I feel you. Um and just all the men out there doing the work, whether you're the, you know, the biological father or the stepfather, we want to give the credit to every man that's out there stepping up because yeah. you deserve it. Um, and it's, it's men's mental health month. So yeah. fathers, check your check your mental. Um, yeah, it's a lot of stuff that happened in this month, April. But uh, yeah, so uh, men, especially black men, it's important for you to love yourself first. Um, and if you just need to start to look in the mirror every day, take 10 seconds and do it. I know it's hard, but it works. Um, yes. I know it sounds crazy, but it does. And then June 10th, June 10th, all my black people go out and celebrate. They, um, they finally gave us a holiday. You, you know, know what I mean? They released like, us from slavery and they decided to tell us. <laughs> like, don't go to Bath and Body Works and buy the Juneteenth edition, you know, anything, you know, don't go buy the Juneteenth salad from some <laughs> grocery store. Like, no, like just do what you've been doing every year, you know, um, and go celebrate with your family. And you know and what, Wes? I don't know where you're going to be. Don't tell anybody. But I used to when I was home in Dominguez Hills, and I don't know if they still have it like uh, it's out in Carson, out in that area. But there would be a big Juneteenth celebration out there. Really? But you know, I don't know. Find you guys, yeah, find something. Celebrate our our history and or learn or and, learn. If you don't learn and and bring the kids in to learn too. Yeah, that's good stuff. All right, my friend. All right, everybody. Okay. Thanks Thank for you. joining us, everybody. Bye. Thank you for joining us and listening to the podcast. If you would like more information on the guests and the stories that you've heard today and to hear stories from others, subscribe to the podcast. We also invite you to subscribe to Open Up Pittsburgh's newsletter as well as our YouTube channel. We want you all to take care and remember to make your own stories. This is April. Peace.